Thing. I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Harrison County Board of Education for Tuesday, January 21st. At this moment, I would like to ask everyone to stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. All right, no worries. All right, next we have special recognitions and presentations. Uh, Ashley Satterfield, principal of United High School and staff. Would you please come up and go ahead and present? So every single person is going to talk. <laughs> yeah, we only have a few of us that are. Maybe by then Jimmy's, uh, yeah. Jimmy will be here. <laughs> okay, Dr. Manchin and Harrison County board members, thank you for allowing myself and the staff of United High School the time this evening to discuss a matter with you all. The United High School building consists currently of 179 students from United High School, Evolution High School, Evolution Middle School, Options Pathway, and the Phoenix program. Our students are our priority when it comes to the vision of our school. We address not only the academic, but also the social, emotional, physical, and sometimes basic needs of our at-risk students. We make sure they are fed at school and have the nutritional resources they need to go home for the weekend with the assistance of community donations. If our students need access to an ID, medical card, or other basic life skills, we connect them with the appropriate resources. For many of our students, we provide a sense of belonging. In my short tenure as principal of United, I can attest to the traumatic life events that specific students experience. As professionals, many of us in this room cannot make sense of what these young students experience in life. In fact, many of us would not only have the ability to get out of bed and not go to work if we had to experience what they do, but what do our students do? After they live these heartbreaking events, they get up the next day and walk the hallways of United High School because school is where they feel safe and supported. Our students know that they will not be ignored. Our students know that they are known by name by me and many others in the building. They know that at least one, if not many adults, will check on them and make sure they have everything they need to survive in life. Our students know that their safety and well-being is our top priority. We show up to the funerals of families of current students and funerals of former students that left this world far too soon. The, current, the culture of safety, security, and knowing that they belong is a culture that we must conscientiously always maintain. There are days that culture is a challenge to maintain, but we always pull through. As we look to the future and what is to come of our programs and their location, I, along with the hardworking, loyal staff of United, and all of its programs ask that you consider the possibility of allowing us to move into the Wilsonburg Elementary location. The culture we maintain that is based on the safety and security of our students will be obtainable at the Wilsonburg location. From a location perspective, Wilsonburg provides a layout that allows us to know where our students are. In fact, from one location within the building, I could visibly see every program throughout the building. Wilsonburg is one floor that allows for staff and administration to respond to any concern within a timely fashion. There are minimal areas for students to hide in the Wilsonburg building. Thanks. Students will be safely located within the walls of the building. Students will not be able to slip away unnoticed. Students will not be able to open doors and allow others or unfavorable illegal items into the school. Parking is sufficient enough to maintain the level of staff and student parking we currently have. Busing will be successful, it is now, without having to close a main road down at least four times a day. The green space can allow us to have our greenhouse and the multiple other projects that have been secured. In addition, the fall festival we have, it would be ideal to have the green space. The heating, cooling, kitchen, cafeteria, gym are all suitable sizes for our programs. The cafeteria and gym are suitable sizes for high school students that are physically larger. Every visitor to come into the building of Wilsonburg would be personally vetted by myself, the PRO, and the secretary. It would be very difficult for a visitor to enter the building and disappear while the secretary must come down the stairs to catch them upon entering the building. The possibilities at the Wilsonburg building for our United programs are promising and optimistic. 
Our staff feels that we can provide the current culture we maintain, if not better, at the Wilsonburg building. We are confident we can. We are not confident that we can do as it is right now in the works. Again, as the planning stages begin for the Gore project, please consider the possibility for the United Programs to relocate to the Wilsonburg facility. Please speak with Harrison County's maintenance and facilities and to, in addition to the engineers working on the Gore project to determine which school, Adamston or Wilsonburg, will be cost effective as a solution with minimal renovation. I am not the authority to make this call. Our mascot at United High School is the Phoenix. The Phoenix is a mythological bird that arises from the ashes, renewed, ready to live another cycle of life. Please allow the students the Phoenixes of United High School, to live their next cycle in the Wilsonburg building. Thank you. Thank you very much. Deputy Hudson would like to speak as well. How y'all doing? I'm Deputy Hudson. I'm the PRO at United High School. I just kind of want to echo some of her sentiments, especially about the entrance. I'm kind of concerned. Adamston, I mean, I don't know where we would have to be to be able to vet everybody that would come inside the building because a lot of times you know we might have different people coming in i don't know if ged is going to be there too as far as trying to vet everybody that comes in the building and then there's a lot of exits at the adamston building that concerns me it's a lot easier i believe at the wilsonburg school to actually be able to check you know if somebody slips out it's still in a rural area whereas if they get outside in Adamston, they're going to be in a residential area, and that concerns me because we have we've had kids at our school leave before, and it's kind of nice because we're out 19. You know, a lot of times I can get in my car, and nine times out of ten I can find them and bring them back to the school. I'm concerned that if we're down in Adamston, I'm not going to be able to do that because they're going to slip in. They have what a strip mall basically. They're right beside the school. They could slip into, or they could, they'll be in a residential area. So that concerns me that. You know, I'm not sure if one of our kids slip out, if I'm going to be able to find him or what they're going to be doing when they slip out. So that concerns me. Um, and then, I mean, I know Harrison County has a drug problem, but Adamston is kind of known to have a bad drug problem that concerns me with having at-risk students in that area with the kids that we deal with, coming from families that deal with drug abuse and stuff of that nature. So that concerns me. Um, and then also, Adamston is a big building. And like I said, my job is to be make sure that school is safe and secure. And, I, and I'm just afraid if an incident or something would happen to Adamson, if I'm on the fourth floor and something would happen on the first floor, that, you know, even seconds can make a big difference if a, if a serious incident were to happen. And I feel like on Wilsonburg that that wouldn't be an issue. Everything is on one level. So whether it be de-escalation or any kind of threat, I feel like that Wilsonburg with kind of, you know, kids and everything that we're dealing with, I, feel, I would feel a lot safer for our students and staff if we were to go to the Wilsonburg school just, just for safety. Um, like I said, just I feel like I could get there a lot quicker at Wilsonburg than being on the fourth floor trying to have to respond to something. So, like I said, I just have a lot of security issues with Adamston, um, and I just feel like the Wilsonburg School lays out perfectly for our programs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I really like that. Yeah. So, I, I think, um, go, I'm sorry. Go. I'm speaking on behalf of the United uh, Faculty, and I'm also Faculty Senate President. Um, this this was hard to prepare uh, and it wasn't because it's not an important uh, matter but uh, over the past calendar year and in, in starting into the new year we've had uh, uh, some real crises with our students at school uh, di different things affecting students and like Mrs. Satterfield said these students come to us and and they're the, what, what they bring and their experiences, uh, to tell it and to hear it, it's, it's just really heartbreaking. And, and what we tr try to provide for them, it sort of, it, it makes, when you're looking at a physical structure, it's sort of what they're dealing with, the physical structure sort of pales in comparison. But, but that being said, uh, one day over cr Christmas vacation, 
I drove down to the Wilsonburg School. Um, it had been several years since I'd been inside the school, and I, I guess I had never really looked outside. And looking at the other exterior, I saw so much opportunity to make space alive for our students. Uh, like they said, a single story, uh, allowing for ease to move throughout the school. At, at, at the Gore Building now, at least the United Teachers, uh, we have contact with every student in that main hall. We just see everyone going by. Uh, the other thing about Wilsonburg, it has all that open space. It has a pavilion for an outdoor classroom. Uh, the points of egress can be monitored by the staff. The agriculture program expansion, there's just so, so many wonderful opportunities that would be available at Wilsonburg. And, and if you're looking at the building infrastructure and the surrounding area modifications, at, at first glance, it would, at Wilsonburg would seem to be less costly than the Adamson School. So that's focusing on the structural part, but uh, I, I guess the question to ask is where would our students be happier? Um, our students have been called at risk. Last week I learned a new phrase to describe these types of students on the margins. They're on the margins. And the role of their point of contact throughout the day has flipped. What we think of as home for all of us, where we go at the end of the day to be comforted, nurtured, rejuvenated, for our students is often empty, dark, cold, and void of any positive interaction. The safe place, the positive environment where adults care and are concerned and interested is found from 7.30 to 2.30 at school. Um, the staff for each of our programs know what being housed at Gore has meant for our students. By moving to Wilsonburg, we are extending the home to include a variety of learning environments, inside and outside, expansion of the green space. We are not buried in the middle of a city block, and our schools are getting away from that. Uh, we are in a more peaceful environment, a pleasant setting where we can take advantage of the outdoors. Now, the upcom upcoming move has not gone, gone unnoticed by our students, and they are concerned and wondering what's going to happen. And we tell them, just wait. We're, that's being worked on. They appreciate the facility and services that our current building provides. It would be a positive boost for them if we could move to a location where we have the ability to introduce new experience, enhance our programs, and let them enjoy the space, the light, the outdoor, and to experience pride in their surroundings by taking an interest in setting up and maintaining those surroundings. Um, this is something many students have found lacking, and I think we can make it best work for them at Wilsonburg. Um, I know I speak for the, the faculty and the staff, everyone that works with us. Our desire is, is to make our school a positive life experience for those who have been in crisis and have not had those experiences before. Um, we just don't want to make this time in school the best years of their life. But we want to begin to let these students know this is the beginning of the better years of their life beyond the time when they leave the walls of United High School. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have a stool? <laughs> uh, I'm Melanie Tillman. And I'm one of the uh, teachers working with the Option Pathway Program at United. Uh, we're just one of the many alternative education programs housed at UHS. Uh, and first, I'd like to say thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve the at-risk students of Harrison County. Good things are happening in our building. I've seen it, and 
I feel very blessed and fortunate to be a part of it. While considering the consolidation of Wilsonburg and Adamson Elementary Schools into what will be the newly renovated Gore Building, I ask that you consider allowing the UHS facility to be housed at the former Wilsonburg Elementary. Uh, part of my program, what I do is I help prep students to take the high school equivalency exam. Many of you know that as the GED. It is now called the TASC test, and it stands for Test Assessing Secondary Completion. And it's, it's a difficult test. And it's uh, very likely that the testing center will be located where we will be housed. Uh, what's good about the Wilsonburg facility is it has parking spaces. Uh, that's a huge advantage for us. Adult ed students will drive themselves to take their test. Uh, also, the fact that the building is one level, it'll make it easier for entering and exiting the building in a timely manner, and it will help uh, direct the flow of foot traffic for the adult ed students. Uh, right now, when we have our task test, uh, it's perfect for my students because the facility is on the second floor around the corner from where my classroom is. Uh, for adults coming into the building, they've got to check in at the office, go down a hallway, come up the stairs, and find the testing center. And so every test day, we're constantly directing people where to go. Uh, so I really think the Wilsonburg building will be a better fit for us logistically. So thank you. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Adam Hamrick. I represent uh, Evolution High School and Middle School. And I've been here recently, you know about the projects that we're having going on uh, through the United Sky School program. Uh, our agriculture teacher couldn't be here today, so I'm also helping represent that CTE completer program. You've heard many things about the structure of the building. I'd like to talk to you about the exterior. Uh, we, the students we deal with, uh, and we, they, not the students we deal with, uh, the issues that they come with, that we help them work through. Some of them, they, they'll, they'll ruin your day when you hear. And uh, we built such a community that the students know uh, fairly quickly whenever they come to our building and to our staff in particular, that we're gonna help them get through those issues. We're gonna help them see that they don't have to be uh, part of the family environment that they come from. They can arise above that. and. I've had four students come back uh, to our school this year to come back and two of them went into the military. They came back in uniform to our school before they even got to go back to their families because we mean so much to them. Uh, two years ago, a young man came back from completing uh, his tenure with the National Guard and he came back in uniform before he came back to his family because he was stationed uh, in the southern part of the state. And uh, I had the unfortunate uh, experience of having to go to his funeral last week but he came back to us first so I want to let you know that our program is working I think you understand that but it's all about the community and the support we can provide for these students uh, with the landscape features we have around in the surrounding area outside the building of Wilsonburg it seems much more inviting there's a baseball field that the uh, the students could be able to use and the agriculture program would be able to uh, utilize their turf and landscape uh, class to be able to upgrade and maintain that field for the community. Uh, we have a lot of plans uh, with some grants we received recently. One we've applied for and we got no red flags back, which is a good sign. A lot of uh, the grants uh, for the freight farm that we talked about, I believe, two meetings ago, they uh, usually come back over half of the uh, grants come back red flagged. Ours didn't. So we got a good chance at that grant. We also just received $3,000 from a separate grant to raise honeybees. And we also have a grant that should be arriving in two years for an unlimited amount of fruit trees. And we have a fall festival and through the ag program and some of the students when they have extracurricular time or some community service time, they'll be able to maintain that orchard, they'll be able to maintain the grounds, get the community service that is oftentimes court appointed and they need a safe area to do that with and the summer ag experiences, these students most likely don't have transportation to travel from one farm to the other over the summer, but they'd be able to get transportation to our building and we'd be there available at no cost to give them their agricultural experience in a safe, well-maintained community environment. 
So I want you to consider the exterior of the building as well as the interior for how positive a benefit it would be to our students to be able to be placed at Wilsonburg Elementary. Thank you for your time. Good evening. I'm Jacob Payhurst. I'm the counselor at United High School. Um, don't worry, I'm the last United High School <laughs> person out. So I only take up, you know, 60 to 90 minutes of your time this evening. Um, so in being the counselor, um, one of my goals is to build relationships with the students and the faculty of United High School. Um, I've held four different positions through different school uh, or different counties and at West Virginia University um, and in every office that I've held I've worked to create an environment that builds those relationships with the people that I come in contact with meaning that I've painted every office that I've stepped foot in <laughs> and tried to really create an open environment um, one of the things that we worked with in the current building that we're in uh, over the summer was to paint the hallways. Um, the hallways were a couple different colors, so that we really worked to create an environment that was going to be welcoming to everybody that came in. Um, so I look at that as just the first step being the building, the facility, where we're meeting our students, and that being the basis of what relationships we build. Um, just providing an environment that they're comfortable in. Um, as you heard my colleagues talk, you know, our, our goal is to create and foster an environment to where our students feel that they're at home, feel that they can foster their educational learning abilities, um, and that is not always something that is important to their families or something that they don't realize is going to be important for their futures. Um, so from my standpoint as the counselor, and working with those students, I have a relationship with every student. I know their name. Um, and we just asked you to look at that and look at what the facility does and where we're going to be for building the relationships and working with our students. So thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate being on the agenda this evening. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next, we have the AED overview and Heart Safe Schools update with Jody Sperry, coordinator of nurses, and Carol Ward. They'll present before the board the AED overview and Heart, schools, Heart Safe Schools update. Frank, can we not comment on? Yeah, I was oh, say I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, if there are comments, yeah, if, if, if anyone would like to comment. I, I also, in regard to uh, your request, you know, whether whether it be Adamson, whether it be Wilsonburg, my my feeling is somebody spoke at first is once have it checked out to make sure you know uh, Mr. Amons, uh, architects and everything, and if they find that building suitable to house it, you know I, I see no problem in uh, you know you not getting what you wish for. Uh, just as long as uh, the building and the structure itself is sound, uh, I, I see no problem with that. You know, I, I see the pros and cons, uh, as Ms. Bastien spoke about. You know, Adamson, you, if they leave the building, we, any school we, I was ever in, we, you always got a few runners, okay? And so this way here, if they're in that area, not too many of them are going to want to run from Wilsonburg to somewhere else. But if they're in Adamson, they, they can definitely, you know, blend into the community and create situations there. So I think once, you know, your request has been made and Dr. Manchin will get with Mr. Ammons and our architects and everything and, you know, do a tour. And if they come back and say, you know, Dr. Manchin makes the final call, says that he doesn't see a problem with it, and I don't think that you'll have any problem from the board and in I think, regard to that. I think before you came there was some discussion about this I've discussed it with Dr. Manchin to at least have our architects and the engineers look from my standpoint the physical plant portion of it which is the HVAC and and the other things are newer on Wilsonburg uh, aside from the area I, I like the space there better in Wilsonburg but I think we're going to find that the HVAC and and the other facilities are have been replaced uh, 
and are a lot newer than what you're going to find at Adamston. So I'm extremely receptive to this. I think it's a fantastic idea. I'm, I'm excited that the, you guys are excited about it. You're looking at the property. You're looking at, you're already dreaming of ideas, how you do use the, uh, the area uh, better to suit these, these kids. And uh, I, I think it's a wonderful idea. I, I really, I'm, I'd be all in favor of it. So I can't wait to get it checked out and let's take a look at it. And let's, uh, let's make it your new home. I'm, I'm, I'm totally in favor of it. My comment is this. I would just like to know, I mean, Gary said that they've been looking at it. Quite honestly, I have not ever heard of this idea until just now. And it's funny to me and how I often tell people, well, come to the meetings or put minds together or whatever. I think sometimes we get so focused on one thing or one thought that it takes a person to think out of the box and everything you have said is absolutely correct and i would just like to know who that one person out there said what about wilsonburg and and took a lead on it because it is a fantastic idea and i am all for it and uh this just shows hopefully everything works out like doug and gary said that it's a, a definitely a feasible option but um I, i'm really shocked that it just now came to our attention, or my attention, because I haven't heard it before. Yeah, I, I, I think it's great, 100% for it, as I, I hope you know it works. All right, any further comments? Well, I might, uh, uh, Mr. President, uh, and, and thank you all for being here. I had the opportunity to walk through the school the other day and, and uh, was approached uh, uh, by several <coughs> and, and brought to my attention. <coughs> and I appreciate that. I, I, I better understand now, since we've been talking about moving uh, these children uh, from the United High School, the depth of your commitment to these students. Uh, how do you care? That, uh, these last, last year and this year, how deeply you care? And that's touched my heart, because uh, all you have to do is go to a graduation and watch those kids walk across to see. And God bless you for the job you do. Uh, the board has made a commitment uh, of putting additional funds in, in, to propose to Adamson when we first talked about it. And we have one more budgeting cycle, including this one, as well as next year, because it won't be till the following year that we'll actually move. But uh, I, uh, based on that discussion and, and the direction of the board, which appears to me they're going to be directing me and have indeed directed me to get a hold of an architect and some engineers to look at, there may be a couple things with the crawl space, there's a few things that, to, to make this... A, uh, a workable uh, building, uh, but I can envision out there uh, uh, even a greater site than what you're even envisioning right now. Uh, improving the, the parking out there, uh, uh, improving the space, uh, additional funds uh, for the greenhouse, things of that nature, which uh, these children certainly deserve uh, uh, all that we can give them and make a difference in their lives. So uh, I, I think Mr. President and if I'm hearing you all correctly, is what I will do is start the process of uh, going out there with uh, some a, an engineer and an architect, look at some things, and uh, we'll certainly bring you into the loop, uh, Ashley, as well as uh, as uh, several of the, well, the entire faculty, and keep you apprised through this whole process. As I said earlier, this will not take place next year. It'll be the year after. So we have a little time, but uh, we will certainly work in that, and I, I envision uh, making this thing come together for you guys. You mean 2001, right? Not 2000. Uh, I'm thinking 20, 2020. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, you're talking about 20, 21, 22. Uh -huh. 21, 22. But I, th I really think, though, the sooner they know where they're going, yeah, yeah, the better uh, it's going to be. And, and and we'll certainly do that. I think you'll see, well, you obviously will be out at Wilsonburg, but uh, when we get this thing a little further along, Ashley, I'll let you know, and then uh, we'll come over and we'll sit down with your faculty and, and, and apprise them where we are. But I, you think, I think you're going to be happy. I'd like to thank each of you for coming this evening and expressing your concerns. Thank you for your commitment. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for commitment. Okay. All right. Jody. This is very informal. Um, you all live in there? This is the love I get for being their nurse. Um, Dr. Phillips came, oh, it's probably been three or four board meetings ago, to talk about an um, initiative that he was 
wanting to bring across the state, but wanted kind of our blessing to proceed forward. And that was Heart Safe Schools. Um, so talking to Dr. Manchin, we decided to go ahead and let's, let's work on some of our high schools to see if we can get them compliant, because we already had a lot of the steps in that. Um, and so I'm just kind of here to give you an update. We are working currently on all of our high schools. I, today I did my staff education with Bird. Um, Kim Cunningham is in the audience. She completed Lincoln's today and we just submitted it to the state. So I think we're going to be the first high school or first school in West Virginia that receives this accreditation um, for Heart Safe School. And part of that is um, training your staff, making sure you have the appropriate amount of AEDs, um, not only in the school day, but outside of the school day for activities, having them in well lit, well accessed places with good signage. And so we've worked really hard um, to get the tools we needed. So the other schools are close behind. You said Lincoln. Lincoln will be. Which is kind of symbolic since they're the. They, they were. They had the first save, and Holly, uh, Miss Hawkins, wanted that really bad. She's like, I want to be the first, and I'm like, Listen, you go, girl. So today we did our staff education. Uh, uh, Miss Cunningham did, and we got all the boxes checked. The uh, Clarksburg Fire Department did a drill because you have to complete a drill as part of that process. Um, so I just wanted to give you. We also, uh, since you were, since I was here last, we got an AED in our lobby. I don't know if anybody noticed the AED signs posted <laughs> as you came in the building. Um, we have an AD right behind the security guard, right to the right of the L main elevator, and uh, there are signs pasted all over the building so that we too here can be safe because we bring students and our staff and visitors in all the time. Um, when we were here last, there were a lot of questions about AEDs, and, and there are a lot of myths out there. And so as we were sitting back eating cake, because if you remember, it was Esther's retirement, um, Dr. Phillips looked at me and said, we need to create a, uh, a myths page. So we did that. Um, uh, Tina Lucas, myself, and Dr. Phillips created this. AED myths debunked and like, you know, can you accidentally shock somebody? What, you know, all those things, questions you guys had and we were scrambling writing them down. And so I'm going to distribute these. This is just for, for you guys for later. But I also wanted to show you an AED as the board and what it looks like because there are different brands in our buildings. Um, and then before we, I leave, don't let me forget to tell you some exciting news about Miss Carol. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to distribute these real fast. <laughs> Is there a way you could put these out on like Channel 18? Um, to this the, information, the, the, myths? the myths. I mean, how do we get this out to the, the students? He's in my building too. So, oh, here we'll bring that one up. This, they're all very similar. Um, this is a newer one that we just purchased, and it's the one that's in the hallway. Mm -hmm. So. That's an older version, which a lot of our schools have. So we look at this one first. But you basically flip the lid up, flip this up, and it, it's going to talk to you. Remove all clothing from patient's chest. No hablar inglés. <laughs> there, is a, there is a language button. See, that's what I was hoping for. So we're going to pull this red handle. Look at pictures on pads. And on the pictures on the pads, Sorry, it's going to tell you where to put the pads. One's usually here, one's usually here. Mm -hmm. And it's going to tell you, start CPR. Yeah. Administer shock. Call 911. Does it walk through the steps it to CPR? It walks you through everything. This is the bomb. This is the best. This is like the bomb. Um, hmm? And and yeah, this, this really one cool. is um, Wi-Fi enabled, and we literally just got these out of the box, so I don't have it hooked up to the Wi-Fi here. But let's say Carol goes down, and I put this on her. Mm -hmm. right? And you only apply pads to unconscious victims. If they're talking to you, they don't have a fatal rhythm that you need to shock, right? But is that uh, one of the myths? So, <laughs> that's one of the myths. Will it so, shock you if you're still no. talking? Well, okay, no, good. Not unless you're in a fatal rhythm, but. The rule is we don't put pads on unless you're unconscious. I'm not. Because um, if you're in a fatal rhythm, you will become unconscious very quickly. Because um, it's not compatible with life, right? Those mm -hmm. rhythms. So if I put this on Carol and I call 911, 
and I'm, if I'm in a school, I call Code Blue, and my Code Blue team runs down to help me. This, if I get it, once I get it hooked up to Wi-Fi, will start talking to EMS en route. Ooh. And it will tell them what rhythm is happening. It will also <coughs> talk to Dr. Phillips, who is the PEDS cardiologist at Ruby, and he can advise um, the, the ambulance what to do when they get there. Besides shocking, there are certain meds you can push. So you have multiple, and this one is compatible with the ones EMS currently use. Mm. And so they unplug from our machine and plug straight into theirs. So this wow. is the brand that EMS uses. So eventually, my pie in the sky is I'd like to convert everybody over to these. Mm -hmm. This one is it's probably it's from... Safer. It is I mean, safer. It is safer when you're looking at dealing with cardiac arrhythmias that uh, in route they're going to be able to tell to you see what's happening. what medication especially because not only is shocking the, you know, the best route to go mm -hmm. when other things aren't available, but when EMS is there, I mean, they're going to be able to push medications that, that they might that not necessarily have known to push because they're not cardiologists, mm -hmm. right? So this is an older version. These were, uh, this one was donated. This is the height field one. It was in my office because I was <laughs> updating it. Um, this is yours. Sure. This is WI's height field one, and I just updated it with new software. It's 2004, so it's quite it's old, old, but it still works. And so you push the button to turn it on. Unit, okay, okay. adult pads. And then these are the pads. Stay calm. And actually, the, these pads are expired, right so we can show them what the pads look like. <laughs> I'm getting new pads. Attach <laughs> pads to If you were wondering, the pictures are on there, and it shows you where to put them on the chest. It will also, it's waiting to try to read a rhythm, okay? So that's why it's gonna keep on repeating. It does talk you through everything. Mm -hmm. um, so these are now, we now have one in every building. Some buildings have multiple. Uh, and I have to turn it off because it's annoying. It's persistent. Um, at Bird, we will have two now in our building. One will be in our baseball complex, which is actually this one. So Hype Field will use it in the fall mm -hmm. for WI, and we'll use it in the spring in our baseball facility. And then that we have one for our football facilities that will be on the concession gate or the gate. So it can also be served soccer, tennis, that area, track. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to be very strategic with our locations. In fact, maintenance came today to install my outdoor boxes. Um, so that's just a quick update. Wanted to kind of let you guys know. I'm okay. sure once we get the paperwork back from Lincoln, we'll be having a big old party and get some big accreditation. Are they near the gyms? Um, at Bird, we have this one in the Eagle Lobby near mm -hmm. the gym. I also put one on second floor, second base. Mm -hmm. at the top mm -hmm. because I was trying to make them opposite ends of the building Yeah, because you need to be to your victim in two to three minutes. Yep. Um, every building is different. So we just bought a new one for WI and we're put in the original one is right as you walk in, it's right by the gym. Mm -hmm. But if you're on third floor, the right. other side of the building, <laughs> ain't gonna make it. you ain't going to make it. They ain't going to sure. make it. So, yeah. so we're yeah. putting it near the stairwell on the office side, mm -hmm. probably second floor, third floor. So we're each building, we're really meeting with the nurses and the administrators of how is a code going to go in your building, mm -hmm. who's going to respond, who's going to get it. So it's going well. So all of our buildings have one, but some have two? Some have two or three, depending on our high schools. Some of them have two or three because they're covering their outside facilities. Mm -hmm. So um, it's coming along. I'm hoping to have all of our high schools accredited by the end of this semester. Mm -hmm. And then we'll start working on middle schools. And now, what, what is the cost of the new ones? Um, this one, they run about 1900 with the box, wall box and all of the all the pads and everything you need. This one is a little more efficient in ex, um, disposables because one pad, if you, you, you didn't notice, but there's a button to hit that has a baby on it. It's to child. Adult mode, hmm. child mode. I was gonna ask you so about the that. The same pads can be used for an adult and a child. These older ones, they have different pads, and so when you replace pads, you're replacing two sets of pads. 
at $150 a set. So with this one, if you didn't have the child pads, you'd use the adult. You could you still, still use the adults. And... I mean, it, obviously it's covering a larger area, mm -hmm. right? As but you so can use smaller. them. So anyway, there's the update on that. And then one quick thing. I just wanted to show you guys. Um, you might notice that the nurses requested to go to a national association of school nurses meeting. That's later in the agenda. But I wanted you to see why. So at the top of the candidates hmm. is Carol Ward. And she has been asked to run for vice presidency of the National Association of School Nurses. So that's a huge honor for us. Nobody from West Virginia has ever been asked to run um, for the National Association. So we were wanting to go to support her. So. Um, and where is it? Well, congrats. It's in, yeah, she keeps it's bringing awesome. honors to us. It's in Las Vegas, so don't get excited, but it's yeah, in Las Vegas. Well, that's cool. <laughs> I think, I think the entire board should go and support you. <laughs> yes. You need some, we need some chaperone. Right? Very good. So last year they were in Denver, next year will be in Austin, mm -hmm. um, but they rotate locations, so. I can um, see the paper now. Nurses go wild in Las Vegas. There's no photos. There's no photos. It takes place in Vegas State. Yeah, what well, takes no, place no. in Vegas State in Vegas. Unless you put it on Facebook. Well, that would be smart. There would be no Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So I'll keep you apprised. I'm hoping that Dr. Phillips um, responds back that everything's in order for Lincoln and they will be our first um, accredited school. I'm hoping maybe we get a banner or something. Outside, and the other schools will follow quickly. Um, I just talked to the fire department today, and I said we're going to do a surprise drill at Bird, and we're going to just bring a dummy in and call it Code Blue. And that's really what, where you see where your faults are, and where oh that didn't work, and you know send it, nobody got the AD, or we got too many ADs. So we're working it out. We're making it safer for our kids. There was a. Um, How often is the is a Code Blue? training like that called? Um, well, we have code blues frequently. I mean, a couple times a year, two, mm -hmm. three times a year. And we're trying to train our, the <laughs> nurses are trying to train the teachers to be more thoughtful when mm -hmm. they call code blue. To not call code blue when someone vomits or someone's just hyperventilating because they're having a panic attack. And so we're really working. And so that has decreased our number of code blues mm -hmm. to be really legitimate. And so, I have an asthmatic turn in blue, you call a code blue, I'm coming for you, right? Mm -hmm. But I want to know that it's true and it's real, um, or someone falls down the steps, or you know, we've had students have seizures, mm -hmm. they have a known seizure disorder, but maybe I had one student tumble down the steps during seizure. That's a true code blue. That's I need to be there. So these will be yearly, these mock code blues, mm -hmm. but the staff's not going to know it's mock. Mm -hmm. And so when they arrive, there'll be a dummy and they will give them a AED trainer, mm -hmm. they'll take the real AED, and we're going to tell them, uh, act like they have no pulse. Mm -hmm. so, so I want to say something about that. About that yes, I heard. Go ahead. So we had um, a student come in today to make up um, some semester exams. And uh -oh. so, um, hey, tag your it. So we had a live um, Oh, so you put them down? We did the actual, um, we did the actual, uh, code right. and did we put trainer pads on him and so forth? He was he did a, he was great working with them. So we we had a real person. So you had a real yes. drill. Yes. and we'll do that at least once a year, once a school year, and and more if we find a school needs to work out some bugs. Mm -hmm. And and each building presents its own unique sets of problems, mm -hmm. whether it be distance and response times, because Bird is a huge campus, and um, so. I'm sure we'll find little things that we can improve upon. Um, but we're moving to safer. Dr. Phillips actually just sent us a link, um, or sent me a link that first day back in a, I think it was a Wisconsin, <coughs> first day back from um, Christmas break, and a student fell over in class and had a sudden cardiac death. And they were trained, they responded, and they got the AD and saved him. Mm -hmm. So it does happen. It doesn't happen very often, and we pray it'll never happen. But we have had a save in Lincoln. You know, not not a month after their AD went up, the rep went down and they saved him. So 
We just want to make our schools as safe as possible. I think the custodian at UTC, same thing happened to him several years ago. Really? And it was the, they had to use the AUD. Yep. I did. Yeah. All right, guys. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you very so much. Now you feel better about using an AED, and if you need an AED, there's one in the lobby. Okay. Hopefully, no one will ever need one here. But uh, uh, Jody, how much time? You know, obviously, the first time you do it, you're going to have to listen to you will uh, have to directions. Listen to oh, what do you say? And, and how much time you have? Well, they like I mean, to if, have if the guys AED ads rest. on the person within two to three minutes. To start the whole the deal AED. has to be. You have to start the whole deal within two to three minutes. Well, someone's already probably doing compressions. So the compression, the somebody you're probably, okay. Yeah. If you find so, no pulse, someone can start compressions <laughs> while you're pulling everything out, you're getting the pads out, you're you're putting the pads on. So if you're doing the compressions correctly, then you're, you're, then you're, yeah, you're getting the blood, you know. Still the, the uh, what, three compressions, one breath, how's that there? How's it's it? 15. No, it's 32. 32. And honestly, in the... They're, they're getting away with breath, they're yeah, kind of say, doing yeah. away with the breath. And so if you have someone who you don't know, just compress mm -hmm. to the beat of staying alive. You know, Cr compressions that will save their life. Can you, can you sing us that song for a second? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, make That's sure. what I was just you looking at. <laughs> and, and actually, um, on um, this machine, too, if you have to do compressions, it tells you that it's, it, there's a sound that will It'll be like, brain. click, click, yeah. click. And it'll say stop compressions, analyzing rhythm, begin compressions again. And so it will, it really talks you through the, the, the whole The good thing about it, about it is in our outer schools, like the South Harrison area, where it takes longer for EMS yeah. to arrive, you may have to do um, compressions and analyze a a, a, at a longer period of time than what, what you would have to do, like in Clarksburg or in Bridgeport or whatever. So that's the good thing about it. So yeah, do, do any of you watch The Office, the comedy The Office? <laughs> well, one of the best known comic sketches ever in the history of television is The Office going teaching CPR. Now, I knew it was in season five, but I just looked. If you ever have a chance, if you have Netflix or whatever, go to season five. It's actually a two-part. It said 14 and 15. It is absolutely, it is known as the funniest comic sketch in the history oh, of television. Okay. It's about CPR. Watch it. It is so funny. Every time you guys talk about that, I think about like think staying about alive, everything. It's just the best comedy sketch ever, or well, series. I have a question for you all. I was just sitting here thinking, would you guys like to see a demonstration at some point? Sure. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. CPR mm -hmm. using that because I, I have the feeling that maybe, I mean, we're so used to it that yeah. it's just it's second. Nature. Yeah. But for a lay person to not be involved in it and see it, well, I see it a lot, I mean, you know, because I work. But, I mean, for everyone else, it, it is scary. Mm -hmm. So that's why I ask if, if sure. at some point. Bring a dummy in, put him right there, and do it for everyone else. <coughs> We can all see we'll it. We'll make one of you. Is he volunteering? You can put my face all over. Are you volunteering? I'll one volunteer. One. Let's do it. I don't care. I will tell you, when you talk about dummies, I, I got a dad one year really bad. It was when... That's, why, that's hard to do. When rectal diastat first came out, mm -hmm. and... Um, <laughs> There's this one. No well, he came up to the old office down at the Kelly Miller old, building. Kelly Miller, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. well, 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 what are you guys going to do about this? And I'm going, you know, Frank, this is a pretty big deal because at the time, I mean, it scared us. It, it scared me. And I remember Frank, if you want to try and be a dummy, you go right ahead. <laughs> he backed away pretty quick, didn't he? Yeah, yeah I can imagine. Thank you, guys. Right. Thank you very much. <coughs> okay, uh, next we have an update on the school-based mental health clinics. Um, Dr. Junkins is not with us this evening. He is being replaced by Senior Operations Manager for Community Care, Brian Cease Vassal. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. Yeah, the amount of times my name has been missaid, uh, well, she, she you guys have knocked me. it out of the park tonight, so. She gave it to me hooked on phonics. What? Yeah. There you go. Yeah, the phonetic spelling is key, so. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for the chance to, to be here and represent uh, Dr. Junkins. Uh, just, it's cool to be here as a resident of Harrison County and someone who's got kids in Harrison County and 
to get to be a part of this. And I, and I love being a part of the school-based behavioral health as well. So uh, I just want to give a little update. So again, yeah, my name's Brian C. Faso. I'm Senior Operations Manager. Uh, my role is, is kind of facilitating the administrative side of everything we're doing in behavioral health. Also want to be a really available contact you know, our clinicians are seeing patients all the time, so it's not as always easy to get a hold of them. But if any of you guys have questions, I'm really just in the office and can be really available. So uh, feel free to use me if you've got questions or anything. That's really what I'm all about. So um, the, the folks uh, from the, had asked for some numbers just to give updates about the number of students we're serving and all that kind of stuff. So the first question was uh, numbers from summertime. And so what that looked like was uh, 190 appointments or visits and 89 patients that we helped. Summertime, that's uh, probably hard to figure out if it's really patients from school-based or patients who see our providers at our clinics, because obviously they're not in school. But that's the number of Harrison County residents under the age of 18 that we saw this past summer. Um, so that's the update there. So it's 89 patients. Academic year up to this point, uh, we've had, at our school-based clinics, uh, 485 visits, and we've worked with 78 patients. So again, that's where our provider is seeing the students in the schools. And then the number of Harrison County st students that we're seeing in our clinics, uh, 540 visits and 170 patients that we're seeing in our clinics. Uh, so we are serving a lot of folks that, that come in to our clinics to see our psychiatrists and our therapists there as well. And then also the question was breaking down how many students are seen from each school. Uh, Adamston has 16 students. Um, ALC has two students that see our psychiatrist. And then there's about eight students that participate in the groups and the, the back to basics work. Uh, Liberty High School has 18 students. Mountaineer Middle has 18 students. Northview has 14. And Salem has nine. And the other thing I would just say, too, is, again, my, my biggest priority, so I've been in this role for about a month now, so I'm still kind of drinking from a fire hose kind of thing, but my biggest focus really is retaining our, our staff of providers and case managers, which I think is really high quality, and also recruiting to add staff because we know the need is, is great. So that's, that's, there's a lot of things I'm supposed to be doing, but that's the one that I'm, is top on my priority list is reaching out and trying to recruit more therapists and more psychiatry providers uh, so that they can meet the adults' needs in this area, but also especially the students in the schools, because, again, that, we know that that need is almost inexhaustible. So uh, that's actually where Dr. Junkins is tonight. He's actually recruiting a, a psychiatrist to see if we can woo him to join us, which, again, would be a great win for us. So we're trying to be very active in that area, and I know that the need is greater than what we can provide people power for, but we're definitely um, working on that. And I know our, our two therapists especially really enjoy working in the schools. I've had the chance to get to know them really well uh, since I've been at community care and I know they really enjoy uh, working with the students and with the staff at the school. So uh, it, I think it's easy for us to pitch to future therapists that this would be a great thing to step into. So glad to answer um, any questions as well. Doctor, what would the... Not a doctor, but thank you. Uh, I didn't play one on TV or stay at a Holiday Inn, but uh, just... Yeah, there you go, exactly. What would you, uh, give, give me an example of some of your successes, and what does success look like? I mean, obviously, uh, psychiatry, you're dealing with a, a deep part of the mind. Does it change behavior? Can you, that is a major, we're in really crisis here, statewide, nationwide. Mm -hmm. uh, can you give me some examples of how you're changing behavior, and, and does that indeed, uh, your line of, uh, of uh, intervention, does that change behavior, or what are we doing? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, so I'll, ask, I'll answer this kind of personally. So I have my wife and I, we adopted two kids. We were foster parents and adopted them uh, over a year ago. Uh, and so wonderful little dudes, but, but coming with issues that we know we have to work with. And so we actually, it's, it's nice I can say to anybody who wants to come to community care that I would trust my kids with our products because I do. They just uh, broke our seven-year-old, just saw Dr. Junkins last week. So I can tell you exactly how it will work maybe in, in uh, a few months as he starts this process. But yeah, I think the goal is to help these kids be able to kind of maximize their ability to succeed in the classroom. So for my kiddo, really bright, has impulse control issues, can't quite focus all the time. So the goal is between 
the school helping with some behavior changes and some structural stuff about how they can help him, that the medicine can help him really focus and kind of be his best self um, in the classroom. So I think the goal in a lot of ways is to help people do the things that they enjoy as much as they would like. Um, and I could talk to our staff to see like if they could pull out some specific cases of where those right, kids are really... That, that you guys administer the medicine? Or, 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 uh... Yeah, so the psychiatry side of things is prescribing, usually it's prescribing some kind of medicine. And then the therapy side is the talk therapy of sitting down with the therapist for usually 30 minutes to an hour working through the issues. And they use different types of therapy protocols. And again, depending on what issue a child has, there's a different approach. For example, like PTSD, there's not really an, a great psychiatric approach. It's really therapy-based. So once you get somebody to that point where you realize that's their big issue, then it's really you have to double down on the therapy because there's not as much uh, research that says medicine in one way or another can help. The, the, the initial consultation, uh, how, how does that take place? Is the principal, teacher, how, how, are you, how are you? Yeah, usually we get referrals from the staff, uh, and then we have case managers that work with our therapists. Uh, so Lori Singleton is our, our new case manager for Harrison County, and we're excited to have her on board. She has a background working uh, with the state before on the, on the centralized intake, so she's experienced a lot of stuff with kids. She will get the referral and then kind of farm it out from there. So if you're having a particularly difficult student in one of our particular elementary schools, mm -hmm. uh, well, that's where we are, right? We're only in the elementary sure. schools. But no, really we're in a couple. Yeah, in high school, school. too. Yeah, yeah, right. Then, then you're apprised of that, you intervene, and and then I'd like to see, and I'm sure you gave us the numbers, I'd like to, and we talked earlier about some successes, uh, mm -hmm. because like like I said, we have been debating that with my staff, is how we're going to address these, uh, we're getting a, a number of teachers who are bringing to our attention, uh, students who are really acting out, really having a lot of problems with them, mm -hmm. and I'd like you to give me the uh, perhaps some of your success sure. stories, uh, and let us know how you're intervening, and, and perhaps we need to utilize you differently, because we're still getting a lot of requests mm -hmm. for help. Yeah. And, and I see you as a major part, and with the training that you have, and perhaps intervening and changing behavior, these kids act out a lot, and we got a lot of problems out there, and we need help. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're meeting with teachers constantly, principals constantly. In fact, I had a number of principals in, in, in my office the other day discussing We've got some major issues, and perhaps, uh, Donna, we can continue to look at, uh, at, at, at expanding your services. And yeah, and that's our big issue is we need to, our CEO says, you know, if we had 25 therapists show up and apply, we'd hire, and they were good, we'd hire 25. You know, so like the real, you know, there's a, lab, we have a little bit of a labor issue, and that's why one of my goals is trying to get really creative and outside the box and not wait for candidates to come to us, but to try to go to them. Uh, so today I was up at WV meeting with the social work program there to try to find ways to pitch us as, a, as I think, a really great organization to some of their students. Uh, we already have both of our Harrison County uh, therapists that are in the schools are both graduates of the WV social work program. Uh, and so we really would l want to keep strengthening those ties to continue to bring folks right from school and also reach out to their network of uh, other graduates who've been in the field longer. So again, that's for exactly that reason is the staffing my number one priority because we know how serious the need is um, and how much, again, so many of the other problems that, that we're working through in terms of substance abuse and stuff affect children um, and how we need to provide them those resources. So, so absolutely. Um, the schools that you mentioned earlier, are those the only ones who are able to get help right now correct yeah our two therapists staff yeah exactly we have wait lists in most of those because again like that's that's what we have right now so to if that. you have a principals or teachers having problems bridgeport or, or lincoln or any of our other uh school south harrison uh, what is the what are their what's the protocol now i mean if they if you're all your staff is busy at those other locations sure that's that's a good question i don't know i know some schools have you know, guidance counseling staff, I don't know what they're, if that's, you know, if they fill in on some of that. Mm -hmm. I imagine some folks see, you know, might see professionals, like, in an outside setting. Like, again, we're seeing 170 folks that aren't known, are in the schools, but are visiting our clinics outside of that. So that mm -hmm. might be something that I imagine is is a popular yeah, option. services through, like, the Summit Center, Center. Or, uh, mm -hmm. for other schools that they will come in and do services. 
Um, I know they do it at Lincoln. Um, they do it at Bridgeport and so forth. Um, I will say, though, I'm the nurse at Adamston, and one of the, the positive things about this program is a lot of these students, this is the way that they're getting the therapy they need because they don't have the transportation <coughs> or um, the access to get to outside, um, not during school hours or whatever. That way they're staying in school, but, but not all, but a, a majority of 